Aronka Chief, Golf Bravo Tango, Romeo, India, awaiting the installation of its McDowell starter. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the installation of the starter and deal with the particular points that may cause difficulty when the starter is installed. Before fitting the starter, the ancillary pulleys need to be fitted to the engine. These are at the rear, just here, and not easy to see, and on the front of the engine, at the, mounted on the crankcase, here. There are also two brackets attached to the front of the crankshaft, crankcase here and here. This engine is the C85 with the flanged crankshaft. Fitting the McDowell starter to an engine with a tapered nose crankshaft is a little different, but many of the points are similar. The starter, of course, is fitted after the nose bowl has been attached. However, because it is very difficult indeed to feed the starter cable through the various pulleys after the nose bowl is in place it's very important to leave a pull through in place and here I have a piece of good old-fashioned English baler twine which has been left through the pulleys waiting to be used as a pull through for the starter cable. The starter of course is a large flat disc and is easily distorted when being bolted down. This will cause problems with recoil of the starter and must be carefully attended to when fitting. In particular, fouling between the front of the crankcase and the assembly screws of the starter can occur here and I, you can see I've had to foul my crankcase a little tiny sliver to remove a fouling point. In addition, I have also had to relieve the mounting plates themselves where a small radius was required on the corner here to prevent the starter from fouling and being distorted when bolted down. Now we come to installing the starter once the cowlings have been refitted. For ease of single-handed installation I have hung the starter on a prop bolt and have used the pull-through to get the cable through and into the engine compartment. The starter is now installed on its six mounting studs and the bolt and the nuts tightened. It is very important not to over tighten these nuts as they, that, this itself can cause distortion. We now check the operation of the starter to make sure that there is full recoil. That looks good. If the starter does stick at any stage, then first thing to do is to check that the one of the mountings is not over tightened. And the best thing is to start with one nut, loosen the nut, check and see if there is full recoil, and then, if needs be, a very thin packing washer can be put under the starter at that site. Ratchet wheel and spinner backplate are now fitted and the prop is back on, using of course longer bolts which have to be very carefully measured to make sure that they don't bottom out against the propeller flange. The all important one eighth of an inch clearance all the way around the starter is checked and okay. This can be difficult to achieve with some nose bowls as they, have, they are all many years old and have seen many vicissitudes in their lifetime. This nose bowl had some filler down at the 7 and 8 o'clock position which needed to be removed before the clearance was restored but it's now quite okay. Golf Romeo India now complete with her starter and ready for test flying. It's important to mention lubrication of the starter as the original recommendation for use of graphited oil is a problem with these as it tends to gum up with age and cause deficiency of the starter. Much better is the use of a light siliconized oil sparingly and only on occasion. 
operation of the starter I would refer you to the excellent video on YouTube produced by Coley Pitts which is all you need to know upon the use of this wonderful device. Clear from.